hari inja na munu ini imazi gose benshi abino hore babatishanga ihi mari da chingo akaboko na wari kurokoka 19 years of suffering 19 years of wandering 19 years of remembering dori myaka 19 dirashize twebuka bacu twabuze Vatu fu ya motu tabishaka imani bahiru kuri dashira. Nineteen years of suffering, nineteen years of wandering, nineteen years of remembering. No more genocide in Rwanda. No more genocide in the world. No more, 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 no more. Thank you. Thank you. In 1994, it happened a genocide in Rwanda, and one million people were murdered in 90 days. During that genocide, I lost my parents, three brothers, and my sister. When, after the genocide, uh, I went back to my village, and um, I asked some genocide survivor what happened. I wanted to know. Um, and I learned that my parents were killed by one of my best friends uh, from my childhood. Uh, I lost my mind. It destroyed my life. I couldn't understand uh, why uh, such a good friend did that to me. It took me nine years dealing with anger, resentment, bitterness. Uh, it, uh, uh, one sat on one pant, I couldn't sing, I couldn't show up on the stage, I couldn't honor my contracts as a musician and a singer. Some of my friends tried to help me. Uh, they brought me to find which doctors to help heal me. I met some doctors. Uh, and one day, all those friends, I went to Uganda because I couldn't stay in Rwanda. Uh, some friends got a decision and they said, Jean-Paul is going to die. Uh, what we can do, let us try and see if we can pray for him uh, as we are waiting him to die. Uh, I went to a mountain, prayer mountain, and I spent time there learning the word of God, praying, and I, one day I decided to take a decision. Uh, I, I had a bad memories what happened genocide, how Christians are the ones who made the genocide possible, 
church leaders kill their own Christians. But I, I decided to, to accept and to try because I've tried everything. I have tried doctors. I've tried witch doctors. And then I, I didn't have a choice. I said, let me try this. I don't have a choice. Then I start to pray. I start uh, uh, to lead the word of God. And um, it helped me to stop drinking and taking alcohol because, uh, because of before that I was an alcoholic addicted. Uh, one day while I'm, I'm praying, I got this voice telling me that I will only be healed if I decided to forgive the man who killed my parents. And I had many thoughts. Uh, and because I wanted to please God, I wanted uh, to make a difference, to be one of a Christian who can even just do what you have learned to practice what they preach. Then I said, let me try again. Let me try to obey God. And I decided to accept and to obey that voice. At that day, that's the day I said, I got a great peace in my heart. I was ready and to go and tell others that I feel that I can go in front of the man who killed my parents and tell him that I've forgiven him. Then I went to my village, or one of gathering uh, in my home village. I asked to speak. They gave me a microphone and I told the audience that the power of forgiveness helped me to overcome the anger and the bitterness. And that's why I'm here to tell you I didn't come to accuse, but I came to forgive in front of you and to forgive Vincent and Eugen who are there present. Um, and we met for the first time. We shared a meal. And we started to talk on the radios, television, sharing the word with this message of love, forgiveness, and reconciliation. Since that time, we worked together. We organized conferences about forgiveness. And I remember one, the big one we organized, it was in 2009, forgiveness, a step to the reconciliation where we stood up together talking and sharing, Vincent speaking about repentance and me speaking about forgiveness. For me, forgiveness means to liberate from our bondage. Forgiveness means to release from our prison of hatred, bitterness, desire of revenge. Forgiveness is for you, not for the offender. When you see in this world, the culture of revenge reigns. A generation, because it's not healed from the generation before, the generation we organize or we, we see many violences in the world. We see a genocide brings another genocide, a war brings another war. We live in the world where the culture of revenge reigns. The only way people will survive, the only way we can break this cycle of violence is the people to forgive. We need to promote this culture of forgiveness if we want to avoid it any future genocide. So in life, we must find creative or constructive ways 
to negotiate conflicts. We cannot change the past, but we can change how we approach it or how we carry our feelings about it into the future. And forgiveness is the key. Let the history inform you, not control you. Let me repeat this. Forgiveness is for you, not for the offender. Thank you.